time for another dyno update so done a lot of work uh, I'll cover some of this in smaller details and some clips but as an overview just wanted to show you where we're at with the wiring and how everything's coming along so what I've decided to do is mount the your dyno power supply on the rubber isolators directly to the chassis I talked about maybe putting it in a box but I'm gonna try it like this for now so I have the power filter right there that's for the mains that it comes in goes to the AC input it also grounds to the chassis right there and then this is DC out so what I've done is on this side you can see this is Bluetooth antenna that's for measuring load and think temperature and that sort of thing and then this is my two wire PWM so as you could see the main umbilical well we'll start here so what I've done is I got rid of the old nasty connectors and now I have nice quick connect got this umbilical I could just take on and off so this is control cable and then this is my mains voltage this is a 30 amp 240 and it's on a GFCI breaker and you'll see we have female side here so when this is plugged in you can't get shocked now these two could just be removed easily coiled up I'm not dragging them around when I'm moving the dyno so power comes in signals come in then here you'll see I have the signal wire P clamp nice and neatly that comes into this terminal strip this terminal strip allows me to change anything on the load cell or PWM and then this is my speed sensor so you could see I changed the two wire dyno dynamics sensor replaced it with a three wire sensor that your dyno requires and then that runs into a peak clamp down there and then all the wires are nice and neat in here and that goes back to here's for the load cell so that's pretty much it I did have to rewire the brake for 192 volts I'll have that in another little video clip that kind of shows you what I did to do that but overall this is pretty much it on the dyno bed wiring and mounting and all that I think it came out really really clean I'm pretty happy with it still got to get the rubber off from those old mounts but other than that the wiring and everything looks pretty good in here and now there's a cover of course that uses those four bolts which you saw me remove in a previous video on to the cabinet reusing the old cabinet push this back so you can kind of see what I got here so here's the old cabinet I'm gonna be changing the monitor but this is what was on there before this is what I got for now so this is really the heart of it this is all there is to it I still have to mount in the back of the cabinet you'll see the control cable is just kind of hanging out there but essentially what's gonna happen is this might be a little dark I have the control cable here um, this was solder cup unfortunately but such is life um, same thing it comes into a terminal strip and I was just using these little, you can see them here, these little zip tie sticky mounts for now. Kind of holds everything in place, but still looks pretty good. So I have a terminal strip there. And then we have our PWM. We have our USB cable. And then we have our RPM input. And then on this side of the box, we have our load cell right here. So this here well I have an old dyno computer this big tower and all that now I have this small little think center again I can't tell how much light we have here but um, small little think center it has um, built-in built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth so that built-in Bluetooth will allow me to connect to the your dyno power supply as well as Bluetooth for Elm 327 I am going to be running the CAN bus adapter as well. I had to order that. It's shipping from China, of course, but it's the way it goes. And I'm going to do the same thing here. I have a, two extra slots there, and I'm going to run the CAN high and low through there. 
and then I'll plug that into the unit here um, and then that will allow me to run CAN data into USB and then capture that through the Dyno software. So for the Dyno software, if you haven't seen it, this is the Your Dyno 3.2 is where I'm at right now. This is all default. I haven't done anything to configure this. I haven't decided what I'm gonna do for my graphs or anything of the sort yet, but I'll go over some of this. So one load cell, that's all I'm using. On the Dyno Dynamics, it's 43 centimeters. Um, I have this in inches, so it's 16.9 inches, and I use the 45 pound calibration weight, which not very scientific, but just 45 barbell, put it on there, hit 45. I think that's gonna be a good start. So kind of see how that goes. This is showing some, some weird values. I don't have the dyno connected right now, so. I just wanted to show you, you need 16.9, you need to use some sort of weight to calibrate, and then a good starting point from what I've seen is 2.8. Now, of course, it says here there's a, there's a way that you could measure it using the dyno, but for a good starting point from everything I've seen online, use this 2.8 figure, and that will get you there. The other thing, my brake controller, I'm using the Eddy Current um, power supply through your dyno. I've rewired to 192 volts and I have tested the brake, all that seems to work pretty well. The only other thing I wanna say for this is if you go into run and then new run, or bring up another menu, of course you can customize all of this. Your RPM setup here for the Dyno Dynamics that I'm using, if you use the existing roller notches, you have 96 pulses per revolution. So you just set that to your load cell one RPM, rewire from that two to three wire pickup, and that should be pretty much all you need. And that's pretty much all there is to it. It's fairly straightforward, relatively inexpensive. Hopefully gonna be a much better option than the hefty price that Dino Dynamics wants to do the conversion. And now I got rid of all the boxes and all the you know, all this crap that was in here from the Dino Dynamics, such that I won't need any more. Much better interface. I got a Windows 10, tiny little PC now. I'll have USB. I'll have the Elm 327. I'll have CAN bus input. Just seems to be so many benefits to going with this controller over what the Dino Dynamics upgrade would have been. So, there you have it. As of right now, things are looking pretty good hoping to test this out pretty soon. I have done all the functional tests. I did plug everything in. The brake does work. All the RPM signals work. So pretty much just gonna be buttoning it up, getting the, the power wires all cleaned up and getting a car on here and seeing how it does. So that's it for now and stay tuned. Thanks a lot.